Josh, obviously we're, uh, we're only a few days away from a massive pay-per-view here done under a country that's been starved for another massive event like this. So what are the emotions now that after years of, you know, fighting in Abu Dhabi and Singapore and all this, you're, you're back here fighting in Australia? Yeah, it's awesome, you know, to uh, be back here in uh, Australia, to be able to fight in front of my friends, my family, you know, just the home crowd in general. Uh, yeah, super exciting. Um, yeah, I'm feeling all the emotions. Uh, Nervous, excited, anxious, happy, you know, all the right emotions. But, yeah, it, it's definitely something special, like uh, something to tick off the bucket list. So, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, this is, this is, this is uh, awesome. I love it. Have you had to uh, – was there any moment in camp that you maybe had to, like, like, pull back the emotions, like you said, and just remind yourself, like, this is just another fight? Or do you allow those emotions of fighting in front of your friends and family to, to creep into your mind a lot? It's usually the other way around. I'm usually, like – you know, just always reminding myself that it's a fight, but then also I have to remind myself that it's, you know, it's a big event and I'm able to fight alongside a lot of, you know, a lot of the Aussies, the guys that, you know, that I, I sort of aspire to be like those guys, you know, so, and, you know, to see the, such a historic event with, with Volk going for champ champ status. So it's uh yeah, it's a historic event and just to be a part of it always, uh, again, like it's, it's so good. It is uh, amazing. And before your last fight at Media Day, your prediction was fight of the night. Uh, you guys put on a pretty back and forth war like that. So against Melsic, what are you what are you expecting? And I expect the same. To be honest, I expect. I, I feel like the the, the matchmakers are, are just putting me with exciting fights, and um, you know I don't blame them. Uh, if I was a fan, I'd, I'd be interested in this fight too. Uh, so I do predict it to be exciting, or whichever way it goes, whether it's a first round finish. Um, Obviously, I, I envision myself getting my hand raised, but I do expect that it's going to be exciting, depending on which Melsic shows up. Sure. And then uh, final one for me, how do you see the, the main and co-main event going? Obviously, Alex going up to lightweight to fight Islam, and then Yair is fighting Josh Emmett for the interim title at featherweight. Man, I like that Yair and Josh Emmett fight. I think it's, it's getting overlooked just because of how big Volkanovski and Islam is. Um, I, I think it's going to be a very competitive match with Josh Emmett and Yair. I think... Yeah, if Yai can keep it at distance and be able to use his kicks and, and keep it at distance, I think he's uh I think he'd say he walks away with this one. But with, with Josh Emmett's power, you just never know. He touches you once, you go to sleep and you've seen it when he's knocked out Lamas and he's knocked out uh Michael Johnson. You know, he's he's got that power, that one touch power. And how do you see the main event going with between Alex and Islam? Oh, that now this one's a, a very interesting one. one. One that I'm very excited to watch. Um I, I do think Islam gets the, the fight to the ground. I just don't see him holding down Volk. Um, and I do see Islam having problems on the feet with him footwork-wise, speed-wise, uh, technique-wise. And then I just see Islam getting tired from trying to you know, work so hard to get the takedown but not be able to rest and Volk just taking over in the later rounds. And plus I'm biased. I'm, yeah. I have to ask, given those two breakdowns, do you watch – a lot of tape on just people in general because that, that was a like, good breakdown right there. Was, was like, yeah, I think a lot of you guys forget that I, I'm, as much as I'm a UFC fighter, I was a UFC fan before I became a UFC fighter. So I love the UFC. I watch all fights, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan. I, I do do my own breakdowns and stuff. And, yeah, I, I, I envision also different fights, how they play out. And, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan. So, you know, I, I have my own, uh, my opinions on stuff. So, and, you know, coming from fighting as well, it's also very interesting to see these sort of matchups as well. Uh, and Josh, uh, fighting in Australia compared to fighting outside, just over here, uh, fighting outside, how have you felt the Australian public? Uh, do you get more people aware of your career because there is a card in Australia as opposed to when you have fights overseas? Like, how's that reception been? Yeah, I feel like um, when when the UFC's come to Australia, when it when it got announced that it's coming to Australia, I do feel like uh, a lot of the fighters, not only myself, had been getting a bit more, you know, a bit more attention. And uh, yeah, I do feel like the the Australian uh, community in general is, uh, um, yeah, get, getting behind us a bit more, and there's more eyes on us. So yeah. And uh, a fight announced between Jalen Turner and fellow Anzac Dan Hooker. Uh, Jalen Turner's taken on Malaki, yourself, Callum Potter, Brad Riddell. He seems to have a problem with Anzacs. Uh, do you have any advice for Dan Hooker? Um, man, that, that's an exciting fight, but I'm, I'm pretty sure i just seen that Dan, Dan broke his hand. 
Dan, Dan broke his hand. So um, that would have been an amazing fight. I, I feel like Jalen must have something against us Anzacs. But, uh, yeah, he, he did, did all of us dirty, didn't he? But, yeah. Thank you. Hey, Josh, just on your career, man, obviously you had a little bit of a rocky start when you first got into the UFC. You're a young dude. You had a good run before coming here. Now you've got these couple of wins. Take us into, into sort of your mindset where you feel you're at in your journey right now. And I guess what you learned from the start of your run here. Um, I, I think when I when I made my debut and I fought Jalen up a weight division, short notice, uh, everything was just sort of like a whirlwind. Everything happened so quick. And I, I, I just, yeah, it was just sort of like, I can't believe I'm in the UFC. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm standing across the cage from Jalen Turner. Oh my God, I lost. So it was, it, it was a bit like all over the place. So I, I didn't really get disheartened with that performance but as I got more fights in the UFC I just feel like I'm getting more comfortable you know doing even this stuff being in front of you guys being in front of the cameras all the lights doing the interviews you know training full-time um, I just feel like I'm getting more and more comfortable with everything and I just feel like it's it's kind of showing through my performances in the cage so um, yeah the, the more comfortable I get doing all this stuff traveling fighting in different places um, dealing with the media, dealing with the fight week, uh, dealing with the weight cut. It's, it's, it's all becoming more natural, and uh, I feel like I'm just starting to get into my stride now. And I know you mentioned you're a big fan, and you were a fan before you got here. Who's your person that you were watching back in the day that stands out to you? Uh, the, the featherweight goat, um, Jose Aldo. So he was the guy that you know, I've, I've always was like, yeah, that's the guy. You know, He's always been exciting, WEC days. Double flying knee knockouts, his wars with, you know, uh, Kenny Florian, Mark Hominick, those were the fights that, like, really, yeah, he's the man. How you going, Josh? Um, keeping your fan hat on, um, I know probably career progression-wise, the goal is to get get on the main card and then title shots and all that sort of stuff, but um, fighting in the, in the earlier um, cards... You kind of get to do your thing, and then you get to enjoy the rest of the event. Do you kind of look at it that kind of way when you're coming up to fights like these? Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, then again, I, I'm like, I'm more worried about my fight, if anything. Like, uh, you guys just had Jamie in, right? Jamie Malaki and like, that's my boy from back in the day. So, it's kind. Of, I'm kind of upset that I can't just sit back and and watch his fight and enjoy it and take it all in. That's why I'm sort of like I wish I was fighting before even earlier just so I could see him fight. Um, but at at the end of the day, it's like I need to I need to focus on my fight first. So once my fight's done, I could sit back and enjoy everybody else's fight. But yeah, um, yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Johnny, mate. Um, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, you've been working pretty closely with Volkanovski over the last few years. How instrumental do you think he's been, kind of, in your career and getting you to where you are today? I, I think he's been he's been massive, man. Like being able to do camps with him, to be be able to train alongside him, you know. Um, I used to think I work hard. I used to think I was like, oh yeah, you know, I grind and I put in the work. But then I seen, you know, firsthand, you know, how hard he trains and how, yeah, like how much work he puts in. So it was a real eye-opener because he sort of set the standard. He's the, he's the number one pound for pound. He's the, you know, he's the king of the division. And just to see how hard he worked is, yeah, it's a real eye-opener. And it's given me like, okay, well, that's the standard. That's what i got to be to be a champion as well. Then, yeah, that's what i got to do. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Harry. Yeah, with Bo? Yeah, we've heard. Like, after trading with him, you said that you took, like, a lot of, um, like, kind of replicated how he structures his uh, fight camp and, like, how he deals with nutrition. Do you, are you still basically following kind of the example he set, or have you started to deviate and make your own plans in that regard? I, I, I do my own thing, yeah, but, like, I just, just the way, just the way he sort of, just the way he sort of holds himself um, in terms of, like being it like how do i put it he's he's the easiest way to uh put it is that like he's a champion inside the cage you guys all know him as the the featherweight champion but he's also a champion outside of the cage so more so instead of like the structure of his camps it's more so him as a person that none of the money 
none of the fame has changed who he was. He's still the same, same guy, st same likable Aussie guy. So that's something I want to aspire to be like. No matter what happens, I want to be the same person. I don't want to change up and do anything different. That's what I want to be, like, like Volk. Jose Aldo hopping over into the boxing world now. Yeah, I did see that against uh, Jeremy Stevens. Um, yeah, man, let him do what he needs to do, bro. If it's gonna be give him an, another paycheck, then get him that paycheck. So yeah, if he's look if he's looking to get paid, then you know pay that man if he, if that that's what he wants to do. So what about Pettis fighting Roy Jones? Yeah, that's a that's a very interesting one because Pettis, you know, he's still relatively young, and you know, obviously Jones is. Uh, Past, past his, past his, past his prime. Um, that's a uh, exciting because Jones is obviously just a straight boxer, and Anthony is uh, uh, MMA guy. So it's like a, a young prime MMA guy versus uh, old boxer that's specializing in boxing in a in the boxing rule set. So it's very interesting.